Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk. Last time we talked about how your bait's getting stolen sometimes from raccoons. Today I want to talk about another factor of dog food trapping. And a lot of times, if you're seeing a misfire, um, there's some ways to help prevent that. And uh, and you will see a misfire from time to time with the dog food. So I'm going to go over some of the basic concepts I use. Back in the day when the Facebook group started, I've always ran my dog food the same way. But I never really said why, because I didn't want to engage with arguments of, with guys, right? I just want to put out good information, and I'll explain now why I do the system I do. All right, so when I'm running a dog-proof trap, typically, guys, I'm going to be staked off to the side over here. Imagine this is pushed in all the way, and, and your trap's set. And the reason I'm going to do that is because typically, not always, because nothing's really always in trap. If this is your trail, your raccoon's going to work it, and they're going to come, and they're going to smell it, and they're going to work it from these angles here. All right, that gives them a little less, this trigger mechanism on the backside, that gives that a little less exposure. Anybody who's been around and handled raccoons, uh, tamed ones, or, or watch how they've handled their food on a regular basis, they use their hands a lot. A lot of feeling around. Even when they're eating and just chewing, they'll sit there and feel around. So what's happening, when guys are sitting those setting those dog proofs right there in the middle of the trail a lot of times is that trigger mechanism is more exposed and they're coming along and while they're eating they're, they're grabbing or bumping that and they're firing that off and then you've missed your thing and they've eaten right so that's kind of what's happening with that scenario now uh, another way you'll get a misfire is uh, if you put your trap down in soft soil I want to explain real quick though so like the Duke dog proof has a has a narrow narrow strip here. This is Z-trap I grabbed. I own a little bit of everything, but you see it's got this nice bigger surface so it doesn't spin as easily. So the main thing is when you put your trap in, you want to put it in so it's solid. Now if you have sandy soil or something like that and it can pip, it can spin side to side because it doesn't have that bigger bottom like that Z-trap has. Um, it's going to give it too much wiggle room and what's going to happen is when they come to grab they're going to pull it out and it's not going to fire off properly when it's laying over on its side. So um, like I said you want to get it nice and solid make sure it doesn't pivot too much side to side um, and that's going to help prevent your misfire as far as uh, and, and if you see your trap laying on the ground guys and it's either not fired off or fired off that's exactly what happened. That's how you missed was because uh, that ground wasn't solid or um, the style of dog proof you had didn't have a big enough thing where it actually it just pivoted side to side a little bit and they just grabbed it and pulled it out is what happened there. So those are two styles of misses with dog proof trapping. And while it may not seem like a big deal, um, you know, simple systems like that that I put into play, like setting it off the side, that's going to minimize those misses. And, uh, the end of the day I want to put out good information that is why I do what I do um, and it cuts down on my misses so anyways guys that's what this video is about just being effective with your dog proofs whether you put something like that into play or not I hope you take the information as presented I appreciate you guys either way so we'll see you on the next one tight change